environmental cycles. Carbon. Less than 0.04% of the air composition is made of carbon dioxide. Yet, this gas is transparent to most of the sun's radiation, implying that the higher the carbon dioxide in the air, the larger the proportion of solar radiation that is retained by the Earth as heat. As carbon is exchanged among the biosphere, petosphere, geosphere, hydrosphere, and atmosphere in a circular fashion, we can distinguish between a geological and a biological cycle. The geological carbon cycle spans over millions of years and relates to the movement of carbonate compounds underneath the Earth's surface, eventually leading to the remittance of carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere via volcanic eruptions. But there is also a biological carbon cycle that deals with the inputs and outputs of carbon in and out of the soil and water over a much shorter time frame via the processes of photosynthesis, respiration, decomposition, and burning. Through photosynthesis, trees and plants absorb carbon dioxide from the air and convert it into chemical energy. Herbivores eat plants, the food chain unfolds, and eventually, the majority of carbon retained by plants leaves the terrestrial biosphere through respiration. Much of the remaining carbon gets released when organic matters decay. This process of decomposition occurs relatively quickly with animals, while it can take decades with plants. Burning also releases the carbon stored by trees back into the atmosphere. The carbon that through plants enters the soil is instead partly released via microbial respiration and decomposition, and in part transferred into the ocean via river transport. The oceanic carbon cycle is just as important as the terrestrial cycle. It follows similar processes by which carbon dioxide is absorbed by organisms and converted via photosynthesis into organic carbon. It is then either exchanged throughout the food chain before being released via respiration and decomposition, or it is precipitated into the ocean's deeper layers. Carbon released to the atmosphere is greater in regions of oceanic upwelling, where dense, cooler, and nutrient-rich water is brought to the surface, replacing the warmer, usually nutrient-depleted surface water. In addition to the natural flows of carbon, Anthropogenic activities are also releasing carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, causing levels to rise faster than ever recorded. The burning of fossil fuels is responsible for approximately 80% of total carbon dioxide emissions. Industrial combustion processes and commercial electricity use account for 7.7 billion tons of emissions per year. Transportation contributes with an additional 6.6 billion tons. Electricity and heat consumption in residential precincts add another 5.6 billion tons. The remaining 20% derives from the indirect impact of anthropogenic land changes. The removal of forests releases carbon in the atmosphere and decreases the biosphere's ability to reabsorb it. An estimated 2.8 billion tons of carbon dioxide are added every year due to deforestation practices. Agricultural land use contributes 2.1 billion tons per year. Factory farming, counting nearly 65 billion animals worldwide, contributes to greenhouse gas pollution mainly via methane and nitrous oxide emissions. Its contribution to carbon dioxide, estimated at around 1 billion tons, is mostly a consequence of animals' feeding requirement for more agricultural space. When municipal solid waste is incinerated, carbon dioxide gets released. A 1.2 billion tons per year is a probable approximation. If the waste is destined for landfill sites, it eventually breaks down naturally, letting methane escape into the atmosphere with even worse environmental implications. The rise in atmospheric carbon dioxide is causing global climatic changes and consequences that already affect our lives today and carry potentially destructive consequences that will last tens of thousands of years.